In this vet girl video, we demonstrate how to place a drain in a patient following a bite wound trauma. When dead space exists following a bite wound, the clinical team worries about fluid accumulation, which can lead to poor wound healing and infection as the fluid present can provide a nutrient source for bacteria and abscess formation. For this reason, we are going to demonstrate placement of a Penrose drain, which allows passive removal of fluid with fluid removal via capillary action. In this video, the patient was placed under general anesthesia and the area around the wound was clipped and prepped to promote aseptic technique and management of the wound. To place the drain, the most dorsal aspect of the dead space pocket is chosen to tack the drain. The proximal end of the drain is blindly tacked underneath the skin with a non-absorbable suture such as ethylon, either 2 or 3 ot in many cases. As you can see in this video, the hemostat grabs the drain in a specific way to allow a visible free end of the drain so that when you drive the needle under the skin blindly, you have a landmark, a guide, notably the hemostat, which allows the clinician to blindly course the needle through the drain using the ventral aspect of the hemostat as a guide. Once the drain is tacked dorsally, the next step is to provide a suitable location to place the drain on the most ventral aspect of the patient to allow gravitational, passive, removal of fluid. As you can see in this video, the drain is clamped with the hemostat so that the tip of the hemostat is more distal than the drain itself. This allows the clinician to place the hemostat blindly in the ventral wound pocket and use a scalpel to create a stab incision to allow the exit of the drain without accidentally cutting the drain while making that stab incision. We don't want a piece of that drain accidentally cut off and left in the wound. So you're using the hemostat as a cutting guide. In this video, for demonstration purposes and visualization only, initially the drain was coursed on the outside of the patient. Of course, the proper placement of the drain is underneath the skin, the video now demonstrating that appropriate placement. Once that drain is placed through that stab incision and the ventral aspect of the wound, the drain is then cut in a diagonal manner, a shorter area, to allow for better fluid flow, and the drain is tacked ventrally, followed by final wound closure. A drain such as this often remains in place for two to four days. If there is no notable accumulation of fluid at that recheck period with the patient and the incision appears to be healing appropriately, the drain is removed in two to four days, followed by removal of the skin sutures in 10 to 14 days, ensuring adequate, complete wound healing. 